I'm Don Cohen with Winnebago Life, and this is our Navian. Actually, it's our second one, and between the two, we've traveled over 70,000 miles in the last four years. And one of our best traveling companions has been our Excite infotainment system. The Excite infotainment system comes in different configurations in various Winnebago models. And I think a lot of people underestimate how powerful this unit is compared to other aftermarket products. So let's take the next few minutes and I'll show you some of the top features that I really like and give you some good tips on getting the most out of your Excite. We'll look at three key areas, setup and customization, entertainment, and GPS. You turn the Excite on and off by pushing the power and volume button. Once the system is booted up and is running, a quick press of the power and volume button mutes any audio. To turn the unit off, simply push and hold the button for a second or two. Now let's look at the side buttons. If your unit has a built-in CD DVD player, there will be an eject button at the top. The first big button is Menu, which will display all the different modes of the Excite including Setup, where you can do a lot of customization. The next button is Navi, which will take you to the Rand McNally GPS screen. With many units, the cam button gives you direct access to the rear video camera. If you don't have this button, you can access the camera from the main menu. Then there's Dim, which, when pressed multiple times, allows you to cycle the brightness of the display from bright to dim. The Fave button is short for Favorites. The function of this button can be programmed in the Setup menu to take you quickly to a feature you frequently use. In my case, I've set the Fave button to switch to Sirius XM. I think it helps when you understand that the Excite is really a computer that integrates various software modules together. And this is a common point of confusion for many owners who mistakenly think that this is a Rand McNally product. It's not. It's made and designed by Excite. They simply license the Rand McNally GPS software to use on it. The Excite handles many tasks, and some units have built-in CD and DVD players. But others, like this new one in the Mercedes Sprinter-based chassis, uses Bluetooth and plug-in solutions from your digital media player. When you choose the setup module, the screen will instantly change to give you a variety of customization options. The adjustment controls are pretty self-explanatory and by tapping on the left or right triangles next to each choice, you can choose the default modes you like, such as language and temperature. Notice the little page icons in the upper right-hand corner? Tapping on these is how you switch pages in the Setup menu. And remember when I talked about setting favorites? You do it here in the Setup menu. Now, look at the big tabs on the left. Again, depending on your unit, your tab choices may be different. As an example, if I choose the Audio tab, now I've got a lot more control options in terms of adjusting music sound and how the GPS voice alerts overlay any music that's already playing. Another setup process you probably want to do before you get on the road is pairing your cell phone with Bluetooth. If you have more than one cell phone, you can pair others to the Excite. However, after doing so, the Excite will find and connect to the last Bluetooth device it was connected to. If you want it to connect to a second paired phone, simply turn Bluetooth off on the first one. When you pair a phone, you have three options of how you want it to connect. Hands-free phone, music only, and hands-free music and phone. Let me show you how easy it is to pair. I go into Bluetooth mode on my phone. I choose Bluetooth from the Excite menu. I'm going to use the default PIN code, but you can change it if you want. I then tap on this icon to set up a new Bluetooth pairing. And there you are, an easy, quick pairing. If you decide to use the phone calling function, you may have steering wheel controls that will allow you to answer, hang up, and change the volume of calls. You can also do this directly with the Excite's touchscreen. I mentioned just a moment ago that you can set up your phone to stream audio into the Excite. But for streaming audio, there's another great alternative in using an iPod, iPhone, or iPad plugged into a cable. 
Most Excite units have a USB input in the front you can simply plug your Apple cable into. The hardwire connection option is great not only for listening to music but also podcasts and books on tape. What's really neat is you can access and control content either from the touch screen on the Excite or the screen of your iOS device. There are other ways of playing media. Some units support CDs and DVDs, and all the units will play most standard digital music formats from a memory stick. Of course, there's the go old style 20th century radio, but with some cool 21st century additions. Here's a few quick tips. The LODX switch adjusts antenna sensitivity when there are too many overlapping stations in an area. Pressing the band button several times will cycle through preset stations you choose that gives you three bands of programmable FM and two of AM. Use the tune and seek buttons to find a station you like, and if you want to save it, simply touch or hold for a second or so on a station button until you hear a beep. The Sirius XM radio works pretty much the same way. I had our Excite for over a year before I stumbled on the band button which works the same way in radio mode by cycling through three programmable channel bands, allowing you to save up to 18 different channels. If you know the channel number you want to listen to and program as a favorite, you can tap the direct button and go right there. If you're like me and can't remember the channel, then scroll through your choices. When you find the one you want, simply tap on it. To save it as a favorite, press and hold one of the open band buttons until you hear a beep. You can also overwrite old presets by simply pressing and holding on that button while you've got a new channel selected. I've had 25,000 miles of navigating experience with the Ram McNally software, and it's actually pretty easy to use, but it does take some practice. So let's just jump into it and start with the most basic thing. With your rig safely parked, start exploring the interface by tapping. You access many features by touching them. The exit POIs. This is short for points of interest. When you're on the freeway, it shows the services ahead of you. The info tab. When you are not in route mode, this displays information on elevation and sunrise and sunset. When you are in the route mode, it shows upcoming direction events. Zoom. Makes the map bigger or smaller. High tab. Especially for smaller Excite displays, this pushes controls to the edge. Tapping again brings them back. Speed. This shows your moving speed, but tapping on it brings you to a lot of stats. You return by tapping on the arrow on the top right. Preferences. While you can set many of the GPS preferences here, this is the button you need to tap to get to the Route Cancel button. By tapping on this box, you toggle the cross street, street or highway you're traveling on, or the municipality you're currently in. I almost always keep this set to cross street display. Compass brings up a menu of choices on how you want to orient the map. To close this box, tap on any of the choices, even if it's the one currently selected. Finally, there's the main menu, which gives you three main choices, but also shows the preferences button, which gives you multiple ways to customize settings for your type of RV, what your route preferences are, and how you like the map display to look. As it is on most of the Rand McNally GPS screens, look for the left arrow in the circle to return to the previous menu. Back at the main menu, the RV Tools gives you several trip planning tools. The two that I use are the RV Info and Warnings. The RV Info asks you to set your routing and vehicle preferences, which in turn tells the routing software the best routes to pick. The warnings icon gives you choices on how you want the GPS to notify you for various alerts such as speed, curves, and borders by sound, visual, or both. Now let's return to the main menu and get into the most common and often confusing part of the software, the choose destination. We could spend a half hour or more talking about all the power that's underneath these buttons, but let's start with something really simple, two ways on how to search. It helps to understand that from the top level of the menu, you step down through various levels of menus. Sometimes you have to step back up to the main level so you can come back down a different branch. On the destination screen, the two best ways to search is either by new location or points of interest. For down and dirty routing, such as from my location to a town, I choose city center. 
That gives me all the long distance routing information such as miles and estimated time of arrival. And this is the first confusing moment. You might think you should tap on the box Enter City Center, but don't. Simply start typing out the city you want. The typing is predictive, and you'll see keyboard letters appear and disappear as you start narrowing your choices. If you get to a list where you see the name of the town you want, but not the state, simply tap List and you will see all the matching names. Choose the one you want and then begin route. I sometimes use compare routes if I'm looking for a more interesting drive off the freeway. Of course, if you want to go to a specific location, you can be much more exact with an address, intersection, or even GPS coordinates. Now it took me a while to figure this out, but the points of interest may be the better way to use navigation. Let me show you why. One of the most common routings we do is to find a campground or Walmart parking lot. When you click on points of interest, you get two main choices. The first is My RV. You use this if you want to search in the proximity of where you are. This is better for closer in searches that are generally less than 75 miles away. Let's say you're looking for campgrounds fairly nearby. Choose RV campgrounds. And then you get a choice of how you want to filter the results. If I choose state parks, then that's what I'll see. Of course, all campgrounds will show you everything. The other categories can be very helpful too in finding things nearby. I'll choose shopping. Now I have a list of even more choices. Let's pick shopping centers. If you see what you're looking for, simply tap on it for routing. Notice how I step back through the menus by hitting the return arrow? So now we're back to the point of interest menu level. Remember, I chose my RV to search for places close to my rig. But what if I want to find a campground for the night at a destination 400 miles away? That's when I choose city. The first thing I need to do is type. Remember, type, don't tap on the top box. After I've entered and chosen the city, I'll see the same choices I did earlier when I searched around my RV, except it will now display choices near my evening destination. I'll choose campgrounds and then all campgrounds. And here they are. Now here's a cool tip. When I choose a location to route to, I also see a save to address book. And if I choose that, I can save this location into the address book. Why is this a good thing to do? First of all, I often plot the next day's location the prior evening. By saving an address into the address book, it saves me from doing a search again. Also, for smaller rigs that may be out and about for the day and coming back to the campground, it's great to have your home base in the directory to find your way back. Let me show you how. Here we are back at the main menu. I'm going to select Choose Destination. Now I'm going to tap on Address Book. And there it is. The destination I've saved earlier and I can now tap and route. If you have a tow car like us with a built-in nav unit, you may find it very helpful to save your campground address into the software's memory for the quickest way back to your campsite. Now that you've seen some of the great powers and features of the Excite system, you see it's pretty easy to use. But that doesn't really replace the fact that a little practice can make perfect. So if you spend some time on the driveway or an evening in the campground exploring some more of these features and playing with them, you're going to get a lot more out of your Excite system. There's also reading the manual. And if you don't have a copy of the manual, it's easy to go download one from Excite's website. By taking the time to learn many of its functions, We've come to love the Excite's power and flexibility. Sure, there are less expensive alternatives out there, but for all its features and capabilities, the Winnebago Excite is truly a great traveling companion. <music>